Hi everybody, welcome to Push Your Luck Video Reviews. Now, before we start this episode, I would like to uh, say a few words first. Uh, firstly, I have not been posting a lot of videos on this channel. Uh, I do apologize for that. This channel is still very much alive. It's not yet dead. Uh, the reason was because I was in London, UK for a short-term assignment. And I didn't buy a lot of games there. Uh, I did play a few games with my wife, but we didn't manage to record anything then. But now I'm back in Singapore. There should be a few videos out. Um, so stay tuned to this channel. Uh, another big exciting news, if you have not heard by now through our podcast, uh, at pushyourluckpodcast.com is that uh, I will be moving to New York to be with my wife and also to uh, pursue my master's uh, degree in game design. So that's very exciting news for me. Uh, unfortunately, that also means that I'm not purchasing any games as of now because it will not make much sense for me to buy now when I may be able to buy them in US. And uh, so this wall of uh, board games that you see I'm currently having a sale as well, an auction sale, to raise funds for my education. Uh, by the time you see this video, there should be two or three days left. The auction will end on the 7th of uh, July, which is also my wedding anniversary. So, yeah, so thank you very much uh, for subscribing to the channel. And uh, do stay tuned, there will definitely be more videos coming out. Alright, now on with today's episode. Hi everybody, now in this episode we'll be looking at Maskman, the latest release from Oink Games. Uh, it is designed by Jun Sasaki as well as Taiki uh, Shinzawa. All right, and uh, this is the first time I think uh, there's, a, there's two designers for an Oink game. Most of the time I've always been seeing Jun Sasaki uh, designing their own, his own games. And uh, so this is the latest release from Oink Games 2014. It is a very small, compact uh, micro game plays 2 to 6 players and about 20 minutes. Now, uh, as some of you have been following me on YouTube channels and on podcasts, you know that John and I both love games from Oink Games. And uh, they are very small, very compact. I think they, they signify the, the, the best of micro games out there. I mean, they're really small. They're literally small as well as um, there are few, only very few components and yet they pack quite a punch. So, uh, does Maskman live up to the hype? That's must end up to the name of Oink Games. Let's take a look at the game uh, components, the gameplay, and I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, these are the components for Mask Man. Now, the theme of the game is wrestling. It's about wrestlers, uh, how they are fighting each other, how their strengths are compared against each other. And through that, players will have a number of cards and they are trying to uh, throw away cards as, as fast as they can. Now, the gameplay is played over four seasons. So one, two, three, four. And uh, depending on how fast you throw away cards, each player will be awarded certain points. So in each season, if you're the first player to throw away all your cards, discard away all your cards, you get the plus two belt. Ta-da! Plus two belt. That means you plus two points. If you're a second player, you get the plus one, which means you get uh, one point. And if you're the last player, you're the very last player to discard away uh, your cards, all right, you get the minus one. Boo! Which means you kind of suck. Right. So after over four seasons, uh, players will com count how many points they have and whoever has the most points will win the game. Uh, so as I mentioned, this is a two to six player game. If you happen to be the third player or the fourth player in a six player game, you will not get any belts. So you get zero points essentially, All right. Uh, which is not a bad thing because sometimes the game will end with, uh, with the person with zero points winning the game. All right. Okay, so let's get into the rules proper. Now the rules is kind of tricky to get to learn all right so bear with me if you have played a bluxen uh, it's kind of similar in the sense that you're trying to throw away as many cards as you can and you play cards either singly uh, by itself or in pairs or in triples now take note that uh, during your turn you're, you are supposed to either play a card or pass so you play a card or pass so when you play a card there are certain rules involved uh, when you pass let's say you're off out of that round each season involves several rounds because uh, you are unlikely to throw away all your cards in one round. Right? Usually, you need several rounds to throw away all your cards. Right? So, uh, at the start, uh, the card, these are the cards. There are, there, are eight, there are six wrestlers. These represent the wrestler. Right? And uh, there are eight cards for each wrestler. So, at the start of the game, depending on number of player, each player will get a number of cards. So, let's say if there's two to four players, you get ten cards each. And uh, if it's a 5 player, you get 9, and if it's a 6 player, you get 8 cards each. 
Alright, so let's randomly give up some cards first. Okay, now during your turn, you can you either play a card or you pass. Now, if you want to play a card, there are several rules that you need to get through. The first rule, if if you want to debut a wrestler, so imagine there's a ring right in the middle here. Alright, now if uh, right now it's empty. At the start of every season, it's, you, it's always empty. So if you want to bring a wrestler in, that means you're, you're debuting a wrestler in, you can only play one card of that wrestler. So for example, uh, player A wants to bring the grey wrestler in, so he plays one grey card. Then the grey wrestler will appear in the ring. So now the wrestler has, is considered debut already. All right? At the start of uh, every round, whoever wants to bring a wrestler in will, will, can only play one card to bring the wrestler in to, to, into the ring. Right now, uh, player B's turn. If uh, if player B wants to bring another wrestle in, because you can't play any cards now. All right. So if uh, player B wants to play a wrestle in, and there's already a card played, okay, you need to play the number of cards higher than the card that is played, so that you can bring the wrestle in. Why? So for example, player B plays two blue. All right. So now blue can debut and come in. Now because player B. Uh, player B plays two blue. Blue is seen as stronger as the uh, stronger than a grey wrestler. So you take this blue and you put to the left of the grey wrestler. All right, that will mean that blue is stronger than grey. This is where this uh, nice little angles come in. So it's like a Pac Man. You can imagine them as Pac Man, waka waka waka, and then you eat the grey. All right, so blue is stronger than grey. Now these cuts played do not mean the absolute strength. They actually represent the uh, relative strength. That means blue is relative is stronger than uh, grey, but that's not mean that blue has two strength or grey has only one strength. Alright, so that's a very important thing to note when you're playing the game. Uh, it's all relative strength, relative to each other, and you're trying to... Uh, these wrestlers will tell you the relative strength to each other so that they'll determine what kind of cards you can play. Alright, so in a, in a typical game, uh, you can also maximum play one to three cards. You, cannot, you can never play four cards during your turn. So for example, in this case, let's say, um, <coughs> ah, so in this case, now uh, player A can play three purple, alright, again, why can he play three purple? Because purple has not yet debuted, and you need to show the, the relative strength of purple coming in to the rest of the table, and because there's already cards being played, alright. Uh, one very important thing to note as well, you cannot play cards that's already been played. So, uh, player, a, player A will play 3 purple, right, which means that now purple comes in -da, and is stronger than blue. So, it will be on the left of blue. Now, as mentioned, you cannot play 4 cards. All right, you cannot play 4 cards. Uh, so, you will need to pass. So, player B will need to pass. All right? And since player A can not play 4 cards as well, and you cannot debut anyone that's stronger, then uh, you can debut anyone because you need to play 4 cards, because, and that's not allowed and you cannot play existing card as well so your player A will also have to pass. Now whoever is the last to pass will now start the new round. So all the cards that have been played are discarded and player A will start the new round because he was the he or she was the last to pass. So now during your turn when you play if there are existing wrestlers on the board in the ring alright these are still out if there are existing wrestlers in the ring you can play one two three cards of the existing wrestler so for example I can play one blue alright player A can play one blue alright uh, uh, take note that you will not draw back up to whatever hand size you have it is a game where you are trying to throw away as many cards as you can so there will always be some cards left over uh, there is no need to draw them it's just to add to the randomness of the game so you cannot cut count per se alright now Back to player B. Player B can now play uh, cards. Now, if existing wrestler uh, is already on in the ring and is stronger, so for example, uh, player B can play a purple card. Why? Because the purple has already been determined to be stronger than the blue. And player A played one blue. All right? That would mean that I am allowed to play uh, cards of wrestlers that are stronger than the card that is being last played. Right, but I must play the same number of cards. So if, if for example, uh, player A played two blues, player and player B had two purples. Player B will be able to play, will be able to play two purples. All right, and that will be how you get rid of cards. Okay. Now, if player A, uh, player A decides to not not bring in, uh, not play those cards that he played previously. He plays, for example, one one pink. 
So now Ping is coming in. First time debut is coming in. Alright, ta-da! But he, we do not know the relative strength of Pink Wrestler to the rest that's currently already available. So what happens is Pink will stay uh, in a different line. All right. So this is where it gets a bit tricky. You need to uh, kind of be able to visualize and see uh, relative strengths and what uh, positioning will represent. Maybe you have a different idea of how you want to position them so that it's clearer to the other players. But so far, this is what we have tried and it seems to work most of the time. There are still people who are confused. All right, so, let, so let's continue this way. Now, player B can always play something of the existing uh, uh, to try to establish the packing order. Okay? So for example, uh, player A has played one pink. Now player B could play two grey. What does that mean? It means that grey is stronger than pink. All right? And so pink will now come to here. Why? Because previously we established that purple is stronger than blue, blue is stronger than grey. Now if grey is stronger than pink, pink must come here. So now you have a packing order established and you continue playing. The confusing part would be, for example, in this case, uh, player B does not, does not play the, the two grey, he plays two orange instead. Right? Which means that orange is now stronger than pink. However, they will still reside in a separate row because we do not know the relative strength of uh, pink uh, and pink and orange versus grey, blue and purple. All right? Now, uh, how, the, how, the, how does it get even more confusing? So for example, let's say if uh, if if player A when it comes back to player A, player A has three blue. So player A plays three blue, and now we know that blue is stronger than orange and pink. Okay, but we do not know whether orange and pink are stronger than grey. So what happens? So you now you need to shift it this way. All right, it will show that uh, purple and blue are stronger than this th this group here. All right, but we do not know the strength of these two. Alright, so this so you need to bear with me here, it gets a bit tricky. Alright, so now what, what can I play now? If I have three purple, alright, I could play three purple because why we know that blue is stronger than uh sorry, purple is stronger than blue. Alright, and blue was the last card being played, and it's still three cards. I, I'm not playing four cards, alright, I can play three purple. Alright. Now I cannot play four green because we are not allowed to play four cards and green has not debuted yet, and to debut a wrestler it must show its strength versus the rest that's already here and the card that's played. Alright. So in summary, when you're playing the game, you are you the wrestlers will show the packing order so that you can tell what cards you're you can play and how you're gonna play your cards. And you're trying to get rid of cards and there are certain rules involved in getting rid of cards. So that is the gist of Maskman. Uh it will take several plays for you to to get it, all right, the, the rules and relativity and stuff like that is a bit confusing and it's not, uh, uh, it's not easy to, to understand straight away. All right, so let's go to my final thoughts. And so that's the gameplay of Maskman from Oin Games. Now, uh, as you, I have mentioned, a lot of Oin Games, John and I both love. Easy to play, easy to learn, uh, very fun to play as well. There's a lot of uh, things that you need to think about. There's many different... Uh, uh, mechanisms that even though it's it could be one simple mechanism but there's it, it creates such a uh, thought process in you all right that is very fun to play for oink, uh, for mask man unfortunately it is kind of it's harder to learn than most of his other games and uh, it is not that easy to master as well most of the time we need to play a few games before players kind of get a sense of what's happening and then can play better all right but even then after a few games they are still they still have a quirky feel about the game. Right? Um, uh, indeed, some players who have played several times when you try to teach the game, they might get lost with the different combinations that's available. While the rule book uh, is in Japanese, it's mostly uh, pictures, so you can still understand how to play the game. Uh, there are quite a few examples as well uh, in the rule book as to explain the different special cases, but you'll probably still meet up some special cases when you're playing a game. So uh, I guess you need to either uh, table house rule it and and move on with the game, or else you get stuck, stuck and you cannot play the game. So uh, unfortunately, while I like most of his other games, uh, Maskman did not really make it for me. It is a, it is good components, fantastic components, wonderful art, uh, okay to play, alright. But it, the the difficulty to learn and to teach uh, kind of breaks it for me, alright. Uh, but uh, 
if I were to compare it to a Blackson, which is a very similar style of game because you're playing cards uh, and you're playing multiple cards and if my number is higher than your number, I, I will be able to eat your card, that kind of thing. Uh, but a Blackson, you already know the packing order because the, the cards have numbers and the numbers and the numbers have the strength. Whereas in Maskman, you won't know the strength until you start playing cards. And uh, unfortunately for every round, it seems to be always the standard way of playing. You play one card, the next player play two cards, then the third player play three cards. And that's usually the first round of every season. All right? And uh, I haven't played with six players and five players yet, but it will be, I, I guess it will be a bit more chaotic because for the five and six players, there will be some players who will get no belts. That means you get zero points. And... Uh, and it might, the point swing will be pretty high, I think, for five or six players. So I would think that if you, if you do get Mask Man and you're playing it, probably two, three or four players will be the best. All right, uh, uh, do take note that uh, this is a review copy from Oin Games. So thank you very much, uh, Jun Sasaki, for providing me a review copy. All right, and so this is uh, Mask Man. Uh, do check it out if you, you like this style of game. Thank you.